Something about you makes me lose my cool It's dumb the way you turn me straight into a fool Ain't fun, girl you make my heart go Like a drone, it never felt this way for anyone Today Property Lim Brothers is in an exclusive landed enclave in the Sembawang's Hills Estate Something about you makes me melt Where we are is in the OCR District 20 in the middle of Singapore. We are along Jalan Leban where we're just 8 minutes walk or 1 kilometer radius to the St. Nicholas Girls School. We have for you a freehold semi-detached today, 3,240 square feet of land, close to 3,900 square feet of built-up space. Now, this house comes with an industrial touch to its design. I absolutely love it, so I can't wait to show you. Let's go. This house sits at a land size of 3,240 square feet, a rectangular plot. The build-up is approximately 3,900 square feet with a 10.1 meter plot with 2 meters extra compared to the brand new semi-D subdivided and coming in with only an 8 meters plot width. Look at this MPV. It can easily be tucked at this side and then at this space that we have right here, it can easily just fit in the second car. If you were to follow me outside here, if you can see this, this is an upslope and it's actually pretty flat for those family members who don't drive so it'll be a very easy few minutes walk from the bus stop let's head back into the house the house was commissioned and newly rebuilt in 2011 this makes this place just a little bit more than 10 years old and the good thing is that the electrical loading capacity has already been upgraded to your 100 m3 phase and what this means is you can easily install your ev chargers so this house is future proofed we also have the cantilever style car porch which provides you with shelter so it's very easy for access in and out of the house into your car so what cantilever means is that it is reinforced onto the walls of the house and then you don't see those poles right at the side. Towards the side, of course, we have some garden spaces. I like it how houses have very huge gates like this because it gives you a very warm welcome to all your guests and your family members. And when you come on in, you will notice that there's a little porch here that helps with the privacy of the house before it brings you into this magnificent volume of space in this entire living hall. The design concept definitely comes with an industrial touch together with some modern carpentry colours so it makes it very easy for you to keep it as it is or to remodel to your own taste. The first thing when you notice when you walk into the house is this cement flooring using top grade micro cement application so you don't see those fan streaks and all that and this is a very highly valued item. Towards the front of the house you will notice that there's this lounging area you can put in some settee cushions and you can easily just chill in here with your friends at extra sitting area or else you can just put in your books along this shelf and then it can be your reading lounge. One other way that you can redo this part is that you can open up this entire space, put in your foldable doors and then this will be your main entrance. Now if you notice, the living room is currently set up in this corner at the front part of the house. This is only making use of half of the entire living hall. You can make use of the entire length of this current living room. Set up your TV right here or your movie screen and then of course your sofa can go along towards this side. So you have a very good distance towards your TV as well as a larger hosting area. But of course if you prefer also to have little pots of spaces for different kind of guests and your family members, you can place your grand piano right here. And of of course, if you move over to this side, then you have a little chit-chat area for your night wine sessions. Now, if we were to move outside, this house was newly rebuilt in 2011. Before that, we actually had a strip of swimming pool right outside at this setback of 2 meters. So you know the possibility of restoring that swimming pool over here if you're someone who likes to frolic in the waters right outside of your living room. This space is really nicely sheltered so you can always keep your living room doors open and because we're facing towards the northeast at the front of the house, this place is going to be very breezy.
Coming back, we are in a two-storey mixed landed zoning. We're just eight minutes walk to St Nicholas Girls School. And further down, we are at the Mayflower MRT station along the Thompson East Coast Line. Thompson East Coast Line, I gotta say, it is a game changer for the D20 because we will have eventual access to the Cross Island Line through Bright Hill Station. And we'll also have access to your Circle Line, Downtown Line, North South Line. The Street 20 is well known for its close proximity to all the good primary schools. So we have St Nicholas Girls School, Ang Mokyo Primary School. Within two kilometers, we also have your Ai Tong, Anderson, and your Mayflower Primary Schools. Being close to this many primary schools would give rise to this thing we call parents' attraction effect. And this would anchor your exit strategy because it will be an evergreen selection for your future buyers. Coming closer to home, we have Sembawang Hill Food Center. You also have several petrol stations. I can just drive in, refuel, and get my light grocery shopping done. If you're into traditional wet markets, we have your Mayflower Wet Market. Just four minutes drive away. Of course, further down, you have Ang Mo Kyo Hub, your Thompson Plaza for your shopping needs, your supermarketing, and your enrichment centers for your little children. And if you're a nature lover, you'll also appreciate that we are close to Lower Pierce Reservoir Park, Macquarie Reservoir Park, and a short drive away to Bishan Ang Mo Kyo Park. Let's head in right to the dining area. Very generous space. They have a six-seater right here. And I like it how that they have this very special doors. You can just open access to your side of the house. Even if you were to close it up, because it's a fluted kind of design, you can still bring in light. We have the aircon already installed here in the casement above me. And I like this kind of semi-open concept because it gives you a lot of like hosting space. And this part is actually more like a dry kitchen for this house. You have a lot of kitchen space here, lots of storages at the bottom. And I love this panel of glass window. You have top panel storages over here as well. You have spaces here, designed for your microwave and your ovens for those who bake. You'll have a very big space for your fridge as well. Now this part is also openable. So if let's say you do some heavy cooking, you can still open up this part, enjoy the aircon and still let the oil fumes hit outwards. You got the 60s kind of vibe to you and it's hard to be. Moving on to the wet kitchen side, you have a door that partitions this wet kitchen from your dry kitchen. This is where you have your fire stove, do some deep frying and stuff. There are some storages. This door leads you to your yard as well. Look back on the years, count on memories. Other people try, but they can't compete. I like it how yards are brightly lit. That's where you get your clothes sunbathed and all. This gate would lead you to a little backyard. From here, you would also be able to see that we are on an elevated lot of land. Girl, you're looking like a best life, a memory, a much sweeter part. The story. Right outside your kitchen is also your household shelter, doubles up as your storage or your dry pantry. Now, let me bring you out to the living area again. This is one big piece of fluted panel door which you can <laughs> open all the way to here, flush it, and then you get this side of the living room very neatly designed with your fluted panels. Guest bathroom, guess where is it? Sorry for the pun, but this is where it is. It's neatly tucked behind the fluted panel door so your guests would have a little surprise and it's also good that it's not shouting into your face where the bathroom is. Before I head up to the second floor, let me give it an honourable mention. Now, this stucco wall might just seem like a normal cement wall. Stucco cement walls are apparently very difficult to build, especially when it's a full height like this. We also have the staircase railing, which is exactly like the kind of stuff that you have in your industrial building. So this is really on point. You have this cantilever stairway, which helps to illuminate the entire space when it's exactly just reinforced onto the walls. Along the staircase, you will also notice that there are already stairway lights that's already installed into the stucco walls. Now, when you're on the second floor, when it's the resting zone, you will notice that the designs get a little bit more cosy and warm. You have these solid timber strips along the common areas, and also you have these doors 
that opens up and lets you enjoy this double volume of space. Now, let me bring your attention also to the marine plywood feature wall right at the back. Charred wood strips that's placed in an uneven fashion, making this entire feature wall a piece of art itself. Family area is an interesting space. You can have your mini entertainment, your children can be watching their show here while you entertain your guests downstairs. After we were to move into your family room, you have your junior master. This is a king size bed with your headboard at the back. We also have a full length window here which gives you a lot of ventilation. This room also comes with that cement screed kind of flooring. You have your armchair here, your study table and of course you also have your bay window here along with your whole L-shaped glass panel of window. Over on this side of the bedroom, right, instead of like just a normal white wall, they actually have a fluted wall here. Behind me would be your walk-in wardrobe very open kind of concept. If you'd like to, you can always put in your conventional wardrobes with your doors. Then leading to wits, it would be my favourite bathroom. Umbrella palm trees Covered in sunbeams Oh, what a daydream Living in paradise So you have your sunken bath here with a seating area. But I like this kind of bath because it is purely a bathtub. You don't have to maintain it if let's say you are not in for a dip today because you have a segregated space for your shower behind these glass shower doors. You have your WC area which has very nice little shelves already done up. You also have a very industrial, sturdy looking vanity basin over here. Using the entire length of the bathroom, you also have some storage cabinets. I like how that there's a little bridge here. It bonds the family together. When you have such open spaces, your second floor and your first floor can each know what is happening. This bridge will also form the privacy between your other bedroom from this bedroom. Now this is the other ensuite bedroom that we have. It is a little bit more squarish, full glass panels, purposefully made in this fashion so that you get a lot of light coming in and also you have a better view of the frontage of the house. This room, no problem for a king queen size, a double king, super king size of bed. You have all your cabinets and all your storage all done nicely. You also already have this part that's provisioned for your TV. And one more feature I should show you. So we have I'm very into um, automated stuff because uh, we have this usual struggle, right? The husband and wife will always ask the other person to go and close the windows, um, turn off the, the lights and um, take down the blinds. With this, it would be your happiness to your, your couple marriage. And so for your master bath, designed in a very similar fashion, seemingly larger kind of sunken bath here as well, done in your mosaic style. Love the huge window that's already frosted for privacy. Of course, you have entire mirror storage cabinet. And then you also have a little basin with this cement finish. WC overhung, easy for washing. And then of course, your standing shower area, which is already neatly tucked in behind the shower glasses. Blended homeowners in D20 can set their eyes on the transformation in this region in the upcoming years. The six plots of land parcels in Lentor region would yield about 3,000 private residential homes. Lentor Modern and Lentor Hills has been launched in your $2,000 to $2,200 PSF range and this is set to increase after its TOP. There will be more land parcels that will be released. So for the future landed homeowners here, you will be expecting that these new homeowners will be benchmarked at a new high PSF and these homeowners may consider to upgrade into the landed facility over here to just enjoy the similar amenities and within close proximity to their children's schools. This forms a very large base of potential buyers in this region for the landed homeowners forming an assuring exit strategy that can be deployed anytime you're ready to move on to the new home. Let's not forget the North-South Corridor Express Tunnel that is also expected to be completed in phases from year 2027 
development, this underground expressway will directly connect the northern regions of Singapore from Woodlands to Yishun, Ang Mokyo and Bishan through to the city centre. It is also expected to have dedicated and continuous bus lanes with priority bus signals, saving bus commuters on average of 15 minutes of travel time. For active mobility users, the North-South Corridor will also be featuring cycling trunk routes. All in all, there will be an all-rounded greater convenience for all types of commuters. To the level 3, you will also notice that the design team starts to get lighter in tone. Remember we talked about stucco walls being very difficult to build. We're talking about three levels of these walls. And notice this thing. These things are called shadow gaps. Shadow gaps are quite rare in new builds these days. This actually gives you a perception of depth. It gives it a very premium touch to the house. Definitely one feature that you won't miss is the skylight. This is usually very common in your terrace houses because they don't get light from the side. But even though at Sammy D. We have the light from the side, but we also enjoy the best of both worlds. On level 3, we have two bedrooms and one bathroom, of which this is actually a Jack and Jill bathroom, commonly used for your third bedroom as well as your guests. It is also done in a very similar fashion. You have your separate standing shower from your WC and also your industrial kind of sink. Grower taps are actually built into the wall, something special that we don't always see. You live with these lies, my mind. It only gets you tongue to tie. Now we head into your third bedroom. It is also very sizable. We're talking about queen size bed right now. You can do a king size bed. You have this whole TV feature display cabinet and over here. And over at the other side, you will also see your wardrobes and then your study table. I like it how the architect has incorporated a lot of glass panels at the side. So you're free to open them up and then enjoy the rain that's coming down like today. Or you can just bring down the blinds and enjoy a good night's sleep. The third level, they also have the shelter at your balcony right outside of your room. Because we're at the higher floor here, we actually enjoy quite a bit of greenery and towering over the other landed houses that's on a lower land plot. Remember the shadow gaps we were talking about? So it runs over here as well. And then also towards the end here, where you have this segregation of this pebble wash kind of lining before you head out to the balcony, which is the wet area. The cold lighting would be great, especially when you are just reading a book at the night. Now, of course, over here is where you get quite a bit of light, large water wardrobes here with sliding doors so it saves a lot of space. We have casement aircon here already done up for you. So remember the Jack and Jill toilet that we went in? You have a push door right here that leads to that toilet. Otherwise, you can just lock it in if you have guests coming in. Level 3, we have the other bigger room. We have this area which is like an entertainment room. They have an L-shaped sofa here, a huge TV feature here. I'm gonna change this into a movie room because this is the place where I can enjoy my loud movies, sing my karaoke and probably not disturb anybody at all. There are very solid timber strips here that lines the entire glass panel over here. Now the cabinets here, you can see it made up of high-spec veneer wood that's very solid, definitely here to last for generations. Outside of here, this is where I would love to entertain my guests. So we can see that you have an entire strip of very generous balcony. You have your mesh fans there also that creates that visualization of more space. You have this motive concrete that would withstand the weather very well, easy for cleaning after party. This is where you can enjoy your greenery of the lower Pierce Reservoir, and this is exclusive to the back row of Jalan Leban houses.
to share with you how rare this kind of semi-D that's over 3,000 square feet in land size is in the District 20. You just do a simple click and you will realise that there are only 10 odd options at that point of shoot. In a land scarce Singapore, as at end of 2022, there are only 73,000 odd landed houses available and this number is set to stay. This means that landed homes make up only 4% of the residential estate landscape in Singapore. A little trivia on the D20 landed home supply, we're just tipping 1,000 1,500 odd for semi-D houses. This is very limited and exclusive as opposed to over 3,000 in a similarly popular D19 landed cluster in Serangoon Gardens, Coven and many more. This semi-D in Jalan Leban is what we would call a Cat 3 house being just over 10 years old. Commissioned by Studio Go2 in 2011, the way it's designed, it allows potential for easy redesigning to suit your aesthetic desires. Let us bring you through a simple breakdown of some redesigning plans you can adopt. Assuming you get this semi-D tech and spend $500,000 for remodeling in the next four to six months, add that reno budget into the asking price of $6.28 million, it will bring you up to about 2,100 PSF. Now let's be generous and bring up the reno budget a notch higher to $700,000, and this would still be highly discounted from a newly built interterrace that hit the $2,600 PSF in the region. If you're looking at a brand new semi D in this region, we're looking at about $7.5 million to $8 million, and ranging in the 2,600 odd PSF. Some other brand new options you have are corner terraces asking at $7 million range at a 2,200 PSF and semi-Ds asking at about 9 to $10 million ranges in the $3,000 odd PSF region. If you're looking for a Cat 2 kind of houses, then we're looking at about 6 to $7 million in the $1,600 to $1,900 PSF. And if you're someone who likes to explore those Cat 1 houses that's suitable for rebuild, we're looking at 6 to $6.5 million range ranging at the $1,400 to $1,000. 1,500 PSF. Now, if you're in a hunt for a freehold semi-detached that's newly rebuilt in 2011, 6.2 million odd dollar range and under $2,000 PSF in the heart of D20's transformation, do contact our listing managers in the contacts below. Now, do also remember to like and subscribe to Property Lim Brothers channel in our YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and TikTok. This is Felicia, Property Lim Brothers, always happy to show you the place. Let's go. Cool. What space are supposed to be? Oh, moving too much to the. Oh, the other is like space. Bounty. You call Bounty, me? Yes. 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 Yeah, yeah, it's quite special that I can find camera lenses here. <laughs> and then this little huff. <laughs> when I'm hot, I can use it. <laughs> Easy for cleaning after party. The lightning is very scary. Did I just lie? <laughs>